All right, so we have here just a base geyser uh, with the Jumper T16. The Jumper T16 is running Crossfire. Uh, the radio is already set up specifically for this quad on Crossfire. Um, it's got the multi protocol on board also, so you could set other models up to be whatever um, protocol you'd like. So for that, you're gonna wanna refer to online stuff um, we'll do our best to help if you have any other questions on it but uh, for the most part we'll be referring you to other videos and other content until we build our own um, but super simple to operate for now you're going to want to power your radio on we're going to go ahead and use all our switches need to be back um, we're going to go ahead and use the 5s r line 3.0 1550s um, it will also run 6s if you'd like uh, 1300 R lines are what we prefer. Um, we're going to go ahead and plug it in real quick. Couple of notations. The props that are on it when you get it are going to be really loosely cut. Um, they're the props that were used to test it and tune it. Uh, we like to let people use these the first few times they fly it so when they hit things uh, they don't really hit the prop against the duck too much. Uh, that being said, the props that you will be getting with it uh, will also be cut a little bit outside of the tolerance, which means they're going to be a little tight. Um, when you get them and the first time you install them, you're going to want to check that these ducks, anytime you move the quad or fly it a couple of times or hit something, uh, or especially package it and ship it or, or put it in your bag, that these ducks are nice and open. Um, they should sit on the standoffs at the right angle, just coming right off. Um, to kind of make them as close to perfectly round as they're ever going to be. Um, on the bottom, check all your screws. After every few flights, there is Loctite on all of them, but you should check your motors and your standoffs pretty regularly. Lots of vibration going on, and even Loctite doesn't hold them. Um, when you do put those other props on, you want them to be right on the edge of touching or as close to touching as possible. So you'll use some clippers to just trim the edges of your props a little bit. Um, but when you first fire it up, you're going to want to actually set it on the ground and arm it a few times. Just let it spin up and see how much it's grinding and if anything's catching and stopping. If it's catching and stopping, try to kind of, again, stretch out the, make sure it's circular. You're going to notice that these are going to never be printed perfectly circular, but they're pretty close. Um, so you're always going to see a little deviation. Uh, let it be right on the edge of touching. And as long as when you're arming it, they all spin, um, kind of just give it a little throttle. I like to pitch forward, then pitch back, then pitch left or roll left and roll right. Um, and what that does is you'll hear the, the, the vibration starting to loosen up and it'll be carving away. So um, once you kind of fit those props, they're gonna be the best props to use. Um, always check your motor temps after flights. Uh, bad props will equal warm motors, uh, but for the most part, this tune really is pretty, pretty good um, as far as on the motors. So arming, like you saw, this first switch on your left above your throttle is arm. Uh, the only other you know, need that you need to know is it's set up you know, mode two, uh, so throttle yaw roll and pitch um, really on this setup there's no other switches set up uh, if you wanted you could set up a beeper within uh, auto flight or beta flight uh, by setting it up um, on one of your switches i personally didn't do it because i didn't think um, i don't like to use esc beepers unless i have to uh, it does have the receiver still connected rx lost so rx lost it should start beeping so if you ever really want to find it just turn off the radio and you'll be able to find it uh, other than that um, here's your setup super stoked to get it to you um, you'll have three sets of props you will need 18650 batteries for your battery tray for this um, i'm right now using a lipo battery uh, if you'd like uh, you could order a tattoo goggle battery, which is what I'm using. Uh, it's a 2S battery. It fits pretty well. You could use it as a backup goggle battery. Um, if I, I would keep this as my, I do, this is my backup goggle and my backup radio battery. I use 18650s um, and then just get a wall charger for those. 
Um, but that's what I do. Um, let me know if there's any other questions. Uh, we'll chat about that. Uh, lastly, actually, before I go, I should probably show you how to run your Crossfire Lua script real quick. So. right in here um, what we're gonna do is hold the system push it for a split second once you're in system you're gonna hit page one time two times and at the top you're gonna see it says crossfire you're gonna press down on that oh wait whoops <laughs> I can't read right apparently um, no sorry system page one time there we go uh, crossfire we're gonna select that top Lua script it's gonna execute and now we can see the crossfire transmitter and we will also be able to now see the RX and configure each one so either way you select which one and you can bind right here um, and then you would basically bind to your other crossfire receivers uh, this is running 2.93 across the board and it is already set to 915 uh, it also has rssi running on auxiliary 4 um, which is channel 8 on an 8 channel crossfire nano there you go hmm.